Hey y'all, Coach Unify here, doing part three of our mini-series on the commands of Hermas, found in the second book by the Shepherd of Hermas called Commands. We're up here and we're looking at starting in chapter five, and we hope during this class we're going to be able to cover three chapters. Chapter five on sadness of heart and patience. Um, the second chapter. Uh, chapter we'll cover today is that every man has two angels and are of the suggestions of both. Um, this kind of will remind you of those images that they've shown us in Hollywood and in cartoons, how there is a good angel and a bad angel on our shoulders, both of which are trying to influence our thoughts and our actions. Um, well, turns out that is actually true. <laughs> and if we have time, um, we will get to uh, chapter seven of this book, uh, which is that we must fear God, but not the devil. This is highly important information for those who um, plan to survive this very tribulous time that we are in now. Um, so buckle up, please stick around and let's learn. OK, so of the sadness of heart and of patience. Looks like this chapter is actually going to have two different commands in it. Verse one says, be patient, says he, and long suffering. So shalt thou have dominion over all wicked works and shalt fulfill all righteousness. Now, for those of you who are just turned, tuning into this series, I would advise you after this class that you go in and check out part one and part two, where we have, you know, given, you know, a lot of detail as far as, you know, um, this book is concerned, where it's coming from and who it is that's talking here. You have two characters, um, Hermes, um, it, who is actually charged with writing this book, is actually communicating with an angel who is teaching Hermes um, the commands needed to live during the tribulation, uh, just like Moses gave us the commands we needed to live up until this point, stuff like not stealing, worshiping one God, honoring the Sabbath day. Well, we are about to enter the next era of humanity, the, the, the uh, um, next part of our spiritual evolution, um, um, just like Moses was there with the uh, first part with the Old Testament and uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was there um, to author the books of um, the uh, second part. Here we are getting ready to go into the third part. Just like Moses was giving a set of commandments that we find over there in the book of Exodus chapter 20, we also were given a set of commands in the second era. Um, this would have been right after um, the crucifixion of Christ, when Paul and John and all of those guys were writing um, the books we find in the Bible, in the New Testament of the Bible, um, this book was also being written by the Shepherd of Hermas. Um, it was considered canonical for many, many hundreds of years, but it was really close to the time when the 1611 uh, Bible came out in English that um, this book was actually um, taken out of the Canaan. But the thing about it, um, these were the commands that we were supposed, these were the commandments that we were supposed to get in the second era, similar to what Moses got. It was in part of our spiritual evolution. Um, having learned things from Moses, like not killing people or not stealing from people or not sleeping with, you know, our brother's wives or whatever, um, we evolved spiritually to the point where we was ready for additional commands. And so in, in these commands, we learn the importance of sadness and how it affects our Holy Spirit. Um, just like in the previous chapters, we learned um, um, about uh, adultery and whether or not we should put our wives away. We talked about lying in uh, part three and talked about baptism and that kind of thing uh, in Chapter one, we learned about uh, slandering and charitable deeds. And in uh, chapter one, we learned about believing that there is is uh, only one God. You know, these 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 are 
part of our spiritual in in a um, evolution you say well you know back over there in chapter one you know we we learned in the first commandment um what we see similar to what we're reading here in chapter one well it is slightly different in the commandment one if you go over and look at exodus chapter 20 you see that the first commandment says that you will put no other god before me that left room for people to think that there was other gods um and as long as we didn't put those other gods before the uh, creator, our heavenly father, then we were all right. Well, we're learning here now that there is only one God, that those other gods are not real at all. You know, so it is a little bit of a difference. And he went on to expound on that um, in great detail in that chapter. All right. So like we're going to, like we said, we, in this one, we're going to learn about patience. We're going to learn about long suffering, but notice, notice that promise there. If we can have patience, if we can understand what we're going to talk about here in this chapter, it says, so shalt thou have dominion over all wicked works. So if we want dominion over the wicked works, if we don't want to be controlled by the evil of this world, then we have to learn to be patient and have long suffering. And it goes on to talk about, uh, and shalt fulfill all righteousness. So the um, what is what is telling us is here is that to fulfill all righteousness, it is necessary that we be patient with one another and have a spirit of long suffering. All right, let's go on. Verse two says, "For if thou shalt be patient, the Holy Spirit which dwelleth in thee shall be pure, and not be darkened by any evil spirit. But being full of joy, shall be enlarged and feast." in the body in which it dwells and serve the Lord with joy and in great peace. So like we said, we, we, we're, we are evolving spiritually. So, you know, you know, it ain't just about, you know, not murdering that person who, you know, is doing us this harm, you know, like we used to back in the day, you know, not, in, not so far in the, in the past, um, you know, when there was a conflict, you know, people killed each other, you know, not unlike it is now, you know, back then it was a lot, a lot of killing. You look at the wild, wild west and that kind of thing. Well, if we had been taught this information, um, like we were supposed to be, um, maybe it wouldn't have been so much death during the wild, wild west because, you know, we would have been more patient with one another. Um, it says, um, for if thou shalt be patient, the Holy Spirit which dwelleth in thee shall be pure. So, you know, talking about the spirit of God in us, um, if we want that spirit to be pure, then again, we have to be patient with each other. Otherwise, it will be darkened by the evil spirits. Um, and, you know, we've done, you know, classes um on the malicious spirits that control humanity right now, you know, you, you can see all of this going on, you know, road rage and riots and, you know, all kinds of stuff going on where it seems like, you know, humanity is constantly clashing with each other. Um, it is because, you know, our patience with one another, you know, is not that high, you know, that's, think about it, that's exactly where road rage comes from. Somebody has made a mistake on the highway and instead of that person forgiving them and, and being, you know, having long suffering toward their brother, you know, they decided to react to it. And, you know, then comes, you know, um, violence and that kind of thing. Now, I can tell you, you know, from a personal standpoint that I have gone through this, you know, I um, growing up, you know, I was not taught to be a patient person. You know, it was only through um, understanding what we're learning here that patience was necessary for our well-being. And I will say that, you know, um, it took a little effort, still taking a little effort to learn to be patient with one another. But, you know, I'll, I'll be the first to tell you that the more we learn to be patient with one another, the more we have this uh, joy that is talking about us, our, our spirits be full of joy and feast in a body of which it dwells and like it says we can serve the lord with joy and great peace um, um patience is necessary if we want this kind of stuff in our life verse 3 says but if any anger shall overtake thee presently the holy spirit which is in thee will be straightened and seek to depart from thee Again, I could give my own personal testimony. Um, I do understand experimentation, you know, um, and I have tried this, you know, sometimes even intentionally, a lot of times just looking and observing uh, myself and my surroundings, noticing that when my patience grew short and then came 
you know, evil. Then came, you know, anger. And we're learning here that um, anger, well, if anger is allowed to overtake thee, it says the Holy Spirit, which is in thee, is straightened and seeks to depart from thee. That's why, you know, when we when we are observe, observing ourselves and observing others, we see that once that person allows themselves to become angry, it kind of spirals out of control. You know, it's kind of like a little bit of little bit of argument, a little bit of uh, misunderstanding. You know, we're given the opportunity to make the right decision and be patient. But if we allow ourselves to get angry at it in that moment, it just escalates and escalates and escalates until, um, you know, things get really bad. Well, what's actually going on there is the Holy Spirit leaves us. It goes away. It separates itself from us. It can't survive in that environment we're going to learn. And so it separates itself from us, leaving us subject to the uh, wicked spirits, the righteous spirit is gone and the wicked spirits are now allowed to have their way with us. And that's why it ramps up so quickly. And you see small um, skirmishes turn into really big deals. You know, sometimes, you know, people, you know, even die over, you know, small issues. Um, verse four says, for he is choked by the evil spirit and has not the liberty of serving the Lord as he would, for he is grieved by anger. So, you know, we can, you know, maybe we should have our pencils out or, you know, so we can, you know, write down and meditate on this anger chokes the Holy Spirit. Anger chokes the Holy Spirit. They cannot survive together. You, If you allow anger in, that anger is going to push away the, the, the righteous spirit out of you. And it will cause you to lose control if you if you don't, you know, somehow get a hold on it. And, you know, pick it, speaking for personal experience, a lot of this, what we're going to talk about, I'm giving, you know, my own testimony because I've been through this a lot. You know, I was kind of raised to think I was supposed to be an angry person, you know. But when, you know, I learned to reject anger, then, you know, I started to see, you know, um, how things became, you know, more peaceful in my life. Um, I'm trying to intentionally avoid these bracketed um, uh, texts here because those are man's additions to the text and, uh, Sometimes it can be a little distracting, but it's making it a little more difficult to read as I try to to um, skip over them. Uh, this verse actually continues on and says, when, therefore, both these spirits dwell together, it is destructive to a man. When you have this uh, war going on inside of you, you have the anger um, going on inside of you. It's fighting against the righteous spirits that are in you. The thing about it, we're going to learn, I believe, in this chapter that those righteous spirits that are in us are meek, they're humble, they're, they're quiet, they, they like to be in a peaceful environment. And so the moment the war starts between anger, it is like the peaceful spirits get up and leave. You know, you can imagine that same thing in a physical environment where, you know, people in a, in a, are in a, in, a, in a room and you have a bunch of people in the room who love peace and love getting along, love concord and harmony. And then somebody comes in and starts fussing and starts fighting, you know, starts getting loud or whatever. You can imagine there are certain people in that room who are just going to get up and just walk away. They're not going to confront. They're not going to argue. They're not even going to, you know, make it known that they have now left the room. That is the same way with the righteous spirits. When e when anger comes in, they just depart from us and go somewhere else. But as we're going through this, uh, one thing that you know should press on your heart is how anger is the result of impatience. Um, like I said, I I, I am a try to be an observant person and you know part of my understanding of this over the years has been observing others like you know my children you know I live in a pretty big household so I have plenty of opportunities to see interactions between my children and one thing one thing I've noticed one thing you'll notice too is impatience comes first you know when you see them you know getting at it you can always back up to the point where one of them was actually impatient with the other one and that kind of was the beginning of the argument the one who was angry will say no it's because that person did this to me and that person did that to me you know that person stepped on my foot you know my brother stepped on my foot that's why we're arguing well if you had a been patient 
in that moment, realizing that, you know, it was an accident that he did that thing. Um, you wouldn't have got angry and then we would not be in this big argument now. So notice the correlation between a lack of patience and anger. Verse five says, as if one should take a little wormwood and put it into a vessel of honey, the whole honey would be spoiled and a great quantity of honey is corrupted by very little wormwood and loses the sweetness of honey and is no longer acceptable to its Lord because the whole honey is made bitter and loses its use. Okay. So you, 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 you think about this, you know, uh, from a practical perspective, you, you and you know many of you will go through this you know once you internalize this message and you start trying to be impatient try to be patient with one another you know it's going to be a trend it's going to be a transition it's not going to be a quick thing you know it's going to take effort but one of the things that you'll notice is is that um when you mix the two you're trying to be patient you know throughout the day with an individual and then you allow yourself to get angry even for a short period of time that anger defiles all of the efforts that you've put forth you know up until that point you know it kind of taints it it kind of spoils it just like it's talking about here if you add just a little bit of wormwood to the honey so if you add just a little bit of anger to the the uh the patience that you have been trying to put on it negates all of that effort so it's important to avoid anger to avoid anger at all costs all right, let's go on. It says, but if no wormwood be put into the honey, it is sweet and profitable to its Lord. Thus is forbearance sweeter than honey and profitable to the Lord who dwelleth in it. So we have to have forbearance towards each other. Um, we have to be patient towards each other. Um, it's, 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 it's absolutely necessary that we do so. Um, remember the times that we're in now. We're in the tribulation. We're at the cusp of the apocalypse. And, you know, as things start to get progressively worse down here on the, on the planet, if we can't learn to be patient with one another, we're going to find ourselves in a lot of arguments and a lot of fights. And, you know, as the love of of our brother continues to diminish well these arguments and fights are going to end in in you know people getting hurt or whatever so and that's the purpose of these commands guys remember you know this is actually teaching us what we need to know in order to survive the stuff that's going on and you know if you flip on the news you or you know and just start to you know start to observe your surroundings or whatever you'll see this actually taking place where you know the people you know if they would just be more patient with one another you know things will go a lot better for everybody involved everybody involved but verse 7 says but anger is unprofitable if therefore anger shall be mixed with forbearance the soul is distressed and its prayer is not profitable with God's. So now the, here it is that, you know, our anger is actually um, hurting our prayers, you know, making it so that our prayers are not effective. I mean, anger is a big deal, guys, um, especially, you know, for people like me. Like I said, I, I, I was born believing that I was supposed to be angry, that, you know, I wasn't supposed to let people just run over me. And, you know, so when somebody would do something to me, you know, it's kind of like I thought it was my responsibility to to hit them back. If they hit me, I was supposed to hit them back. Well, um, so now here I am, you know, about to turn 50 years old and I'm having to unlearn that kind of stuff because, you know, it is it is my desire to survive this tribulation. You know, I understand that if I can somehow survive this tribulation, then my whole family has the chance to survive. If I've survived, they're going to survive. If I don't survive, they have no shot at surviving either. And I want to see my kids go on to and get to get the promises of the Bible to have the opportunity to inherit the earth. So that's why it's important to me to, you know, grasp this stuff and to, you know, really work hard at at it because um, you know, there's there's a lot at stake here. The whole planet is up for grabs. Who's going to get it? There's going to be somebody here. You know, who who is it going to be? Who's going to be the new Noah's going forward? You know, verse eight says, and I said unto him, sir, I would know the sinfulness of anger that I may keep myself from it. And he said unto me, thou shalt know it. And if thou shalt not keep thyself from it, thou shalt lose thy hope with all thy house 
Wherefore, depart from it. Okay, now this is what I just was talking about. You know, I see how it's saying here. This is this is hermits. We're all kind of like a hermits, especially if you are the head of your household. It is it is really up to you to grasp this these principles even more so than the rest of the people in your family. Because if you don't get it, ain't nobody else gonna get it. You know, like I said, I keep wanting to spread my, you know, put my own personal testimony in this. And I'll tell you, you know, in times when I have trouble uh suppressing the anger, well, the rest of my house does too. You know, but the opposite is true too. When, you know, I'm having good days, good weeks and good months where, you know, my long suffering and my patience is, you know, dominant and I'm not allowing myself to get angry over this and angry over that. Well, I also see my children getting along better with each other. It, it goes hand in hand. And that's what Hermes is telling. Um, that's what Hermes is being told here by, um, by the shepherd is that if you can't do it, you know, your whole household is in jeopardy. You see right there where it says, and if thou shalt not keep thyself from it, thou shalt lose hope with all the house, all of, all of, all of your household is in jeopardy. It's, it's dependent. Your household's hope for surviving the tribulation depends on you guys. Um, Assuming that, you know, you are the head of your household and I know a lot of you guys are the man of the house and, you know, some of you guys are the woman of the house, um, still head of the household. But, you know, whoever it is, if, 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 you know, you're the woman and your husband, you know, is not, you know, lis listening to this, you know, you really need to put it in front of him because if he doesn't get this, your whole household is in jeopardy. You know, that's why, you know, when people, you know, when they, they come, they send me emails or send me comments and they're expressing concerns about the relationships in, in their household. The first thing I do is tell them to read Hermes. you got to get these principles first. You got to learn stuff like humility. You got to learn stuff like patience. You got to learn stuff um, long suffering. If you don't, you know, it's never going to get better. And your chances of surviving the tribulation is is um, is 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 not that great. You know, times are really going to get hard. And if you can't control your anger now and you're going to end up in a fight, well, here a few years from now, that anger is going to end up in violence. You know, it's going to end up in somebody getting hurt, somebody going to prison and that kind of thing. Um, but be observant, you know, you're the head of the household, you know, I'm gonna tell you how this is going to work. You know, you, you're going to embrace this idea first and you're going to start to, um, put on patience you're going to start to learn to have forbearance towards your your wife and towards your kids you you're going to um start putting away anger but you know it's not going to be instant for them too you know it's not going to be instant for them just like it's not going to be instant for you and so as you are learning to be patient notice how they are acting notice that okay it's given an example here you have you are and I, and I know it's a lot of women that watch this, probably more women than men watching, you know, some of these videos. But, OK, you are the man of the house. You are have now learned to be patient and to put away anger. But your wife is a few steps behind you. You know, she hasn't quite learned yet. Well, notice, just notice that on the days when she allows anger to overtake her, notice how it spreads to the kids. Like, you know, she'll be fussing at the kids that morning. And then later on at the day, the kids are going to be fussing at each other. You know, that, and the opposite is true, too. When, you know, they start to see her um, be patient with one another, they'll start to be patient with each other, too. Um, like I said, I've, I've been through this stuff a lot. Me and Hermes, we go back a long way. Oh, OK, let's go on. Uh, verse nine says, for I, the messenger of righteousness and with thee. And all that depart from it, as many as shall repent with all their hearts, shall live unto God, and I will be with them and will keep them all. Okay, now, understand, we, we are evolving spiritually, guys. A lot of what's going on and where we're at now is our spirits are maturing. And we'll start to recognize that there are beings around us having an effect on our life that we can't see there. There are angels who are playing a part in this thing. Um, there, there are good spirits out there and there are bad spirits out there. 
the the goal is to separate ourselves from the bad spirits so that the good spirits can have their way with us we don't want the bad spirits to have their way with us we want the good spirits to be doing what they what they want to do well that's what it's talking about here this he says he is the um the angel of righteousness here the messenger of righteousness means angel of righteousness this is a spirit that wants to come in and wants to interact with us well we're seeing here that you know he is with us and he is working on our behalf to help us help keep us on the right path help you know and you know the more we work at it the easier it is for him to do his job and he is able to to keep us um um in peaceful environments but notice how it says there, as many as shall repent with all of their hearts. See, that's necessary, guys. We, we got to repent. You know, we can't just be sorrowful. You know, being sorry doesn't mean that you repent. Those are not the same thing. Repent means to actually have a change of heart. You know, at some point, you know, along this journey, I actually made a conscious decision that I did not want to be an angry person anymore. And I still have slip ups, you know, from now time and time or whatever. But generally speaking, I am no longer an angry person because I have now repented of that anger. And I'm doing, you know, my best to actually keep anger out of my life. But by doing so, see what it says right here? Then ye shall live unto God. So, you know, and Hermes, he hasn't defined this yet. You know, I'm you know, waiting until uh, the shepherd defines what this term means here so we can get a clear understanding of what it means to live unto God. But then it says, and I will be with them and will keep them all. So the harder we work to keep anger out of our life, the more we can expect to have this help from the angel of righteousness. And the opposite is true, too opposite is true too if we don't work hard at it at all well the angel of unrighteousness or the angel of inequity um which i think we're going to talk about in the next chapter is going to have his way with us verse 10 says for as such as have repented have been justified by the most holy messenger who is a minister of salvation okay now this right here is talking about the forgiveness of our sins um once we have repented of being angry all of those years now we are justified in our actions you know it wasn't till you know here recently in the last five six seven years that i started to you know take on you know the principles taught in the shepherd of hermits well what about the other 45 years when i was an angry guy you know well by repenting now I don't have to go and try to make up for what I've done in the past. When I have this repentant heart, I can now, you know, um, be justified in, you know, what's been going on. And then, you know, you can, you know, get a good idea of all the individuals who are at play here. He, this is the angel of repentance that's talking and he says, you know, once we become uh, repentant of our anger, then we are justified. But who are we justified by the most holy messenger who is the minister of salvation? So there is kind of a hierarchy going on here. The angel of repentance is not the top angel. He he answers. We're going to find out later in this book that he actually answers to um, the most holy angel who may or may not be Michael, you know, it very well could be Michael, the Elijah spirit or whatever. Um, it could be talking about the most high, um, but notice the hierarchy here. Verse 11 says, and now says he, hear the wickedness of anger, how evil and hurtful it is and how it overthrows the service of God for it cannot hurt those who are full of the faith because the power of God is with them, but it overthrows the doubtful and those that are destitute of faith. Guys, we really need to meditate on, you know, some of this stuff that it's talking about here because, you know, anger doesn't like what you're saying here. Anger doesn't overthrow the servants of God. Um, it can't hurt those who are full of faith. But what about the doubters? What about the ones that are doubtful? It has a powerful effect on them. Guys, I mean, during this journey, you know, I remember plenty of times that I thought my family wasn't going to make it. If you come and you ask me now if I think that our family has a chance of surviving a tribulation, I, 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 and I would say yes. I, I believe that we do now have a great chance, a really good chance of actually making it through this apocalypse. But you would have asked me a few years ago, man, there was times when I was so doubtful 
guys that we would even make it anywhere close to the tribulation, much less making it through it. I thought we did not have a chance because of, you know, how much uh, arguing there was going on around the house. And, you know, that's what this is talking about. Those that have a little bit of doubt in them or full of doubt um, in them or destitute of faith, if they can't separate themselves from anger if they're living in an angry environment they really have no chance of surviving the tribulation it's going to overthrow them it is extremely hurtful I'm talking about the wickedness of anger this is you know why this is so important to grasp this i'm taking this real slow i realize i'm tripping over my words a lot because you know i really want you guys to to grasp what's what's at stake what's you know what's at stake here grasp this anger because you know out of all of these commands that we're going to learn here this one is probably the, the the most powerful one guys out of all of them just like when you you know looking over in exodus chapter 20 if you was to ask me which one was the most um important commandment out of exodus chapter 20 out of the 10 commandments i will tell you that it was obedience to the sabbath day because you know it, it tells you all throughout the scripture that if you don't mind the sabbath day if you don't keep the sabbath day you're not going to keep any of the rest of the covenant you're not going to keep the covenant it's just a, it's a token it's a sign you know if you get up you get um the blessings necessary in order to keep the rest of the commandments when you keep the Sabbath day. So if you don't keep the Sabbath day, you might as well forget the rest of them. Well, it's the same with this anger, guys. You can forget about the rest of these commands that we didn't talk about before, and you can forget about the you ain't even need to go on in, the, in this video or the rest of this series if anger is not going to be put away. If you can't get over anger, you know, <laughs> you might as well go watch somebody else because <laughs> it just ain't going to work. You really need to to get anger out of your life. All right, don't, don't go nowhere else. Finish watching the video. Verse 12 says, For as often as it sees such men, it casts itself into their hearts. And so a man or a woman is in bitterness for nothing, for the things of life or for sustenance or for a vain word, if any should chance to fall in, or by reason of any friend or for a debt or for any other superfluous things of the like nature. So we have a little bit of chronology here and I've studied this a lot and this is exactly how this works, guys. It, it, it starts off, um, this is not the very beginning. We're going to learn here that, you know, um, actually silliness comes first, but it, it starts off with uh, the people getting in bitterness over nothing. You know, you look at the stuff that people argue over and, you know, it, sometimes it be the silliest stuff you know he cut me off while i was driving well you know that happens you know is is driving you know people make mistakes or whatever that should not have cost that person their life or it should not have cost you your freedom because you know he forgot to use his turn signal or whatever but it happens it says for a vain word you know somebody says something that you didn't like or say you know end up getting into a big heated argument over you know some silly word that somebody said and you know if we had been patient with the person we might have went in we might have had them to clarify did did you mean to say that word or you know was that really what you meant this is the way i understood what you said is that what you meant to say and a lot of times you know it's just a misspoken word you know just a misunderstanding but if we don't have patience pay and patience is going to lead to anger and you know then we're going to, you know, find ourselves, you know, in jeopardy of actually making it to the kingdom of heaven at all over a vain word or um, what does it say? Uh, the things of the life or for sustenance or, you know, just just the smallest stuff. When you look at it, it it's usually just the smallest stuff that, you know, people end up getting it, getting fight. They think it's a big deal. They always think it's just they always think they're justified for their actions. Um I was watching a video the other day and the lady was on a plane and the stewardess asked her to wear her mask. And, you know, by the time they started filming the video, they were in violence. <laughs> they throwing punches, you know, and the person who, who took who made the video was was talking about how it all started because there was a rule that the lady was supposed to wear her mask. And <laughs> real silly, the lady had a mask on her head. She just didn't have it on her mouth. You know, and so she was all she'd been wearing a mask the whole time. But the fact that the, the lady that stewardess asked her to pull that mask up three inches to cover her mouth caused one lady to go to the hospital. The stewardess ended up in the hospital. The the um the 
the other lady, the perpetrator or whatever, ended up in jail. You know, the flight ended up, you know, being delayed for hours and hours. You know, all kinds of stuff went on because of three inches of where this lady was wearing her mask. She was wearing it, you know, low on her face or still around her ears. She could have pulled that thing, her mask up three inches and, you know, you wouldn't have had this big old fight. Because, you know, I ain't no telling how much they cost. When you think about the people on the plane, the other, you know, hundreds of people on the plane, all kinds of stuff go on because of three inches on a mask. Silly stuff. And that's what it's talking about here. We've got to learn to be patient with one another. Um, verse 13 says, For these things are foolish and superfluous and vain to the service of God. But equanimity is strong and forcible and of great power and sitteth in great enlargement is cheerful, rejoicing in priests, and glorifying God at all times with meekness. Now, I tell you guys, I, I, I suggest to you guys all the time that you go get these books. You can find The Shepherd of Hermas in a volume of books called The Lost Books of the Bible and The Forgotten Books of Eden. You know, you just Google Lost Books of the Bible, Forgotten Books of Eden. You can actually find a copy of that book. I would I would advise you to keep it in your library right next to your Holy Bible. And um, so you can read this stuff and read it often. We're not always going to have, you know, the Internet, you know, at least going to be a short period of time when it's going to go away. But you're going to have to have this information because it is necessary. Um, and when you get it, when you it, even if you are just looking at it on a PDF or whatever or listening to it, be mindful that you want to look these words up. You know, even the words that you think, you know, you you might want to go look them up anyway, because um, the the inspired word of God is 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 really, really sophisticated. And the words that they chose to use, you know, are important. And sometimes we think we know what a word means because of what we've learned. And when we actually look it up in a def in a dictionary, we find that it means something diff totally different, like the word sober. You know, we should be sober. You know, I thought for 45 years I knew what that word meant until one day I'm sitting there let say, let me go look this word up and see what sober meant. And it don't mean nothing like what I was told. I, I had no idea what the word sober meant until I actually looked it up in a dictionary. So look these words up and we're looking up the word equanimity here. And it says mental calmness, composure and evenness of temper, especially in a difficult situation. So if we can have mental calmness in a difficult situation is what it's talking about here. And what does it say here? Herm, the Shepherd of Hermes says, but equanimity is strong and forcible and of great power and sitteth in great enlargement is cheerful, rejoicing in peace and glorifying God at all times with meekness. How powerful is that, guys? If we can be calm in these situations, even in difficult times, if we can have equanimity, if we can be calm in those times, if we can be tranquil in those times, now we become powerful individual it don't take it don't take much power for somebody to blow up and get mad you know they think they're strong you know because they're rah 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 you know all of this but you know that don't that don't take even a child do that you know two years old you know this child it can can you know just have a tizzy fit or whatever but to have calmness within difficult times is powerful you know that's that's of great power and and you said it's in great enlargement you know you know that's the kind of stuff that presidents used to be made out of uh oh Maybe I should take that back. But, you know, that's that's where our diplomats come in. You know, that's that's, you know, when you go in some of these board meetings or whatever, it's that that person that can be calm and be, you know, tranquil in the difficult times is who we usually choose to be our leaders. You know, why is the one who's going off or whatever? You know, all we want to do is call security, you know, maybe have this person removed from the environment. They're not helpful at all. Um, remember, the scripture says, uh, Blessed is the meek, for he shall inherit the earth. Well, this is what we're talking about, guys. And we can always go back to um, the teachings of the Messiah on every one of these commands that we're hearing here. And we can actually see verses to back them up. Um, you know, maybe if one day we'll go back and we'll actually, you know, see the references that the Messiah made to these. But, you know, he simply stated, you know, blessed are the meek, for he will inherit the earth. Well, this is exactly what he was talking about. If we want to survive the tribulation, we're going to have to have equanimity. It is absolutely necessary to make this word equanimity a part of our life if we want to survive the tribulation. If we, if we don't, if we don't care about surviving, you know, we ain't got to worry about it, you know. 
We can be angry all we want, but let's go on. Verse 14 says, and this long suffering dwells with those that are full of faith, but anger is foolish and light and empty. Now, bitterness is bred through folly, by folly, anger, by anger, fury. And this fury arising from so many evil principles worketh a great and incurable sin. Okay, now this is part of that um, that progression that we were talking about earlier. I was telling you how um, it kind of starts off. I, I think I was used the word silly when it says here they use the word folly. So when you when you when you're being observant, you kind of notice this. That this is exactly how it always works. I used I used the word silly. I probably should have used folly, but it kind of start it, it, it starts off that way, you know where you know things are going halfway all right something happens um one person don't really like what happens or whatever it always seems like the first act that you notice is the folly or the silly silliness you know because it can go either way you know if i step on your foot it could go either way at that point it's it's not what happens to us what they used to say is five percent of what happens to us and 95 percent of how we react to what happens to us so i can step on your foot the the next thing that comes you know if, if things are going to go bad it's going to be followed by some type of folly some type of little silliness some some little word that you know the person is going to say some little act that they're going to do you know it's something little something that will almost seem um like no big deal as well you know the person stepped on the foot um that may have seemed like a big deal then the person, you know, did some other little thing, kicked them or, you know, said something. Well, that don't seem like that big a deal. Seemed like the stepping of the foot thing was bigger than that little, you know, slant that the person said. But it's part of this uh, progression because what's going to happen immediately after that is the bitterness is going to come. And so, you know, that's why when I'm observing my kids and I look for that, I look for that folly. I look for that thing, you know, and, you know, I'll tell them quick, don't be silly. Because I know what's coming next. I know where we're going to end up next. It's going to be followed by bitterness is coming next. And then after bitterness comes in anger. You know, you can see it progressing in people, you know, jump on there, jump on YouTube, you know, and look at, you know, the Karens of the world or whatever. And you can see this, that progression. If you see the whole video from the beginning to the end, you can see the whole progression as it goes from folly to bitterness. And then it goes to anger. You know, and at some point, somebody's going to have to get a hold on it. You know, if they can somehow, you know, calm it down, if they can stop it in that moment and not let anger, you know, continue to take over them, they can reverse things. But if they continue to let anger push away that Holy Spirit, that spirit of righteousness, remember, that's what anger is going to do. It's going to drive out that spirit of anger. So if they can, if they allow that to go on, that anger is going to turn into fury that and then after, you know, after the fury and then what does it says and this fury arising from so many evil principles you know because you know at that point the evilness has taken over the person the righteous angels is gone everything good is gone at that moment and the only thing left around are the evil evil spirits and it says those evil principles work a great and incurable sin meaning that the person is going to do something they can't they can't stop they're going to hurt somebody they gonna break something. They're gonna do something that can't be reversed at that point if they don't stop it. You can stop it along this path anywhere. You know, until you get to fury, you know, you can stop it. You can stop it at folly. You can stop it at bitterness. You can stop it even at anger. But you know, once you get in the, into fury, chances are, you know, well, ain't no chances are if you don't stop it at fury. Now you're gonna do some incorrupt, incurable sin, incurable something that can't be undone. Some word that can't be taken back. Some bullet that can't be put back in the gun. Some eye can't, that can't be unswole up. You know what I mean? Something going to happen. Um, some car that can't get uncrashed. You know, some, something's going to really happen. But notice up back up there, he says, but anger is foolish and light and empty. So he's comparing anger to equanimity. We have to put this on, guys. You know, this is the purpose of our channel. You know, you know, I was just looking at the scripture a few minutes ago. I think it was uh, Matthew chapter five, how we have to be a little bit salty, you know, and, you know, our, this is what we have to do. This is what I have to do, guys. I can't always, you know, tell you guys nice things, you know, have sugar in all of my videos. You come over here to get your feel of honey or whatever, because I'm just going to tell you uh, things that you want to hear to make you feel good. You know, no, we have to be salty 
and, and or you know we're going to be cast out this is this so you know this is you know some saltiness here that we have to add to this subject as we're talking about um putting on equanimity and putting away anger we've got to get this anger out of our life or our whole family doesn't stand a chance of surviving we're about to if we can't stop being angry we're about to be responsible for the death of our entire household guys this is some serious stuff here that we're talking about verse 15 for when all of these things are in the same man in which the holy spirit dwells the vessel cannot contain them but runs over and because the spirit being tender cannot tarry with the evil one it departs and dwells with him that is meek <laughs> now this is a trick guys this is this right here. I use this tool all the time. You know, when I find myself in a difficult situation, I, I, I try to use it all the time when I can remember it. I use it all the time. But what it's saying here. OK, you have these two individuals that, you know, are into or about to get into a heated discussion or argument or something like that is about to go bad. Well, so you have this anger that's welling up in both individuals. Both of them started off with the Holy Spirit in them, the spirit of righteousness. Things was going good. They had the spirit of righteousness in them. Then all of a sudden, there's some folly that's going to lead to anger or lead to bitterness. And then it's going to lead to anger. Well, if you can stay tranquil in that moment while that other person gets anger, angry, what it's telling us is going to happen. OK, the, the righteous spirit is actually going to leave them. And it's going to go to the person that is meek. So we're coming into this argument. We both have an equal portion of this righteous spirit in us. Something happens, you know, some silliness doesn't done occur. And, you know, then some folly took place down. There's, there's anger there. The person who can stay tranquil will keep his Holy Spirit, the, the spirit of righteousness. The person who is angry will lose the spirit of righteousness. That anger is going to push it want to push the righteousness away so where does that righteous spirit go it goes into the other person so think about that the person who is meek and is tranquil now has a double portion of the spirit they got they got the spirit that they had at first now they got the spirit from the other person i mean we're looking that's what the scripture is saying if i'm wrong let's put it in the comment section but it says and because the spirit being tender cannot tarry with the evil one it talking about the evil spirit the 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 good spirit can't tell you with the evil spirit. It departs and dwells with him that is meek. <laughs> right. So that spirit over there or, you know, then came over here where I'm at now. This is the benefits of being tranquil. This is the benefits of having equanimity in this moment. Like I said, me and Hermes go back a long way, guys. Years and years and years of this, you know, so um, I do have a lot of experience with this on both sides of the coin. I've been the angry one too, and I have noticed, you know, take for instance, me and my wife, you know, when starting this thing, we used to argue a lot, and you know, we've both matured a lot since then. Praise the Lord for His Word. Praise the Lord for allowing us to have Hermes here in these end times, um, to help us, you know, to mature to where we, you know, praise the Lord, we we get along pretty good now because of what we, you know, understand from, you know, the Shepherd of Hermes. But I can remember times when, you know, I had read these principles and understood them but i was still not doing very well with them and there was times when my wife she actually matured a lot faster than i did at some point along this journey you know she was real good at it but i was still allowing myself to get angry while she would stay calm even when i was angry when i was angry and i could see this actually take place i could see i could see that the righteous spirit the calm spirit had left me and it was aiding her and allowing her to even be even more calm in that moment. And, you know, I had to catch myself because it was like her calmness was making me even more upset. And it was like, whoa, you know, and but I could see that, you know, after having read this book and understood this, you know, I could actually see that was going on. And so I was, you know, able to control myself in that moment, you know, and praise the Lord. You know, we still have our, our freedom. We still have our lives. We still have our relationship, our marriage, our family is still intact. And it is only because of the shepherd of Hermes that, you know, we can give credit only because of the Lord who inspired this book. Can we give credit? Otherwise, you know, anger would have destroyed us. It would have destroyed us. You know, I, I got a code name in the fight. Well, there was used to be a time when I was in every fight, you know, oh, I hope you guys appreciate, you know, me telling you this stuff, you know, it doesn't make me, you know, feel comfortable, you know, putting, putting my business out there in the street like that. I'm not, you know, 
trying to make myself look good or whatever. I'm, I'm really trying to help you guys understand, you know, so even though, you know, my testimony is not gleaming with, you know, perfectness, you know, I've got more bad stuff in my testimony than good stuff, but, you know, um, I'm working for that treasure in heaven. So it may be embarrassing to me now, but if it actually helps one of you guys to get this, then, you know, I think I'll get credit for it, you know, on the other side, you know, but anyway, let's go on. He says, when therefore it is departed from the man in whom it dwelt, that man becomes destitute of the Holy Spirit and is afterwards filled with wicked spirits and is blinded with evil thoughts. Thus does it happen to all angry men. Uh, yeah, you can see, guys, I don't I don't usually, you know, read chapters before I do the class, you know, I've. I almost think of it as kind of a waste of time. Maybe it would help me read better. I'd probably do a lot better at actually reading it if I'd have read this chapter before we started this class. But, you know, I like to keep my class spirit driven. You know, I don't like to prepare my words. I like to, you know, say my prayers before the class and then I allow the, the father to, you know, you know, add what he wants. I'll read the text and whatever he wants me to say, you know, I'll just blurt it out there, you know. Anyway, um, but you see here, this is what we've been talking about the whole time. It says, when therefore it is departed, talking about the, the righteous spirit, talking about equanimity, the, the, the spirit of calmness, the, the, um, that spirit that we talked about up there, the good spirit. When it is departed from the man in whom it dwelt, so it didn't left that individual, that man becomes destitute of the Holy Spirit and is afterwards filled with wicked spirits. So the Holy Spirit didn't left, you know, is, is, is gone. Let's go look up the word destitute. All right, destitute, we have lacking something needed or desirable, uh, lacking possessions or resources, especially suffering extreme poverty. So it's not gone for good. You know, it's just gone in that moment. It The Holy Spirit can't dwell in with all of that anger going on. And so now it's, it's gone. Now, what does it say? And become destitute of the Holy Spirit. And is afterwards filled with wicked spirits. So, you know, once we done driven away all the good, now all the bad is allowed to come in. The bad don't have a problem dwelling with the good, guys. It just can't have its way in there when the good is in there. But the thing about it, you know, like like in a, like in a room, you know, you got, you know, a bunch of good people in a room, a bunch of bad people in a room. Well, once the bad people start to get out of control, the good people will squash it out. Well, what happens when you get rid of all the good people? Now the bad people are just going to have their way. And that's what's going on when the Holy Spirit is, 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 has left this individual that is angry. Now you have these wicked spirits that's going to, they're going to try to kill. They're going to try to kill you. They're going to try to kill this individual um, in this moment. You know, that's why there's so much death going on. That's why the tribulation is going to get so, so bad is, you know, because we're going to, humanity is going to allow anger to push away the righteous spirit. And then you're just going to be left with evil spirits, wicked spirits. And once this happens, he says, the individual is blinded with evil thoughts. Thus does it happen to all angry men. So the evil thoughts kick in and start making the person do even worse than what was going on. You know, this, this is some important stuff. I would, you know, get this book and read this chapter again. I know I'm messing it up pretty good, but I just want you guys to, to hear this message because of how important it is. Um, once you allow yourself to get angry, you push away the, the righteous spirit. Now you're going to be overcome by wicked spirits and those wicked spirits are going to start blinding you with evil thoughts, evil thoughts and thoughts have power, guys. And, you know, these thoughts are going to do just as much devilment as anything else. You know, they're going to cause you to be suspicious. They're going to cause you to think of bad things you could do to harm. That's where, um, um, maliciousness comes in you know you start thinking of ways you can hurt the other person and all of this kind of stuff this is what's going on but it says thus does it happen to all angry men this is what's going on in every angry man you know so we, we got to get anger out of our life 17 says wherefore depart from anger and put on equanimity and resist wrath so thou shalt be found with modesty and chastity by god Take good heed, therefore, that thou neglect not this commandment. So the opposite of anger is equanimity. So we need to practice this, you know, take take the opportunity and practice this. Even, you know, when things, you know, are, aren't going bad, we practice this equanimity. Remember the definition of the word equanimity is calm, you know, so we practice being calm. 
you know, at all times so that when the bad moments come, we're kind of good as resulting back to a calm state. You know, we want to be calm and we want to be tranquil individuals. Now, notice it says, um, take good heed, therefore, that thou not neglect this commandment. Talking about how important this commandment, he's going to tell us how important this particular commandment is right here in a second. He says, for if thou shalt obey this command, then shalt thou also be able to observe the other commandments which I shall command thee. And the opposite is true too, guys. Like we talked about at the beginning. You know, if you can't get past anger, you might as well not even read the rest of the book. You know, you can shut the book now. This is why I've had three, four, maybe five copies of the Shepherd of Hermes over the years. They cost about, you know, you can find them anywhere from 12 to $14 on eBay, wherever, Amazon, just look up the Lost Books of the Bible, Forgotten Books of Eden, right there in the middle of the book. You know, I should, I should go over there. I'm going to take a picture of it for you. All right, here's the book right here that we're talking about. When I keep saying that this in a volume of books, it's called the Lost Books of the Bible and the Forgotten Books of Eden. But notice how my book has been taped together. This has happened every time, guys. I've had four copies of this book. See all that tape and stuff in there? Watch what happens when you look at where it breaks apart at. Chapter 5. This part on anger. It splits right there. That's how important this chapter is, guys. You keep going back to this part of the book, trying to make sure you got this part. Like I said, I used to be an angry guy. And see, see that? See, I didn't have to paste this. I didn't have to take this book together. And for those who got this book, you know, and it falls apart right there in the middle of the book, right there in the chapter on anger. That's how you put it back together. You get you some tape and you take the pages back together. And you see right there, he says, well, you see up there in, in, in uh, verse 18, he says, take heed, therefore, that thou neglect not this commandment. Verse 18 says, for if thou shalt obey this command, then shalt thou also be able to observe the other commandments which I shall command thee. He's going to go on to talk about these two spirits to dwell with man. He's going to talk about fearing God and not dead the devil. He's going to talk about fleeing from evil. He's going to keep giving a few more commands here. But if you don't get this one right here, you know, what I mean, it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough. All right, let's go on, find out where we were at down here. Uh, verse 19, the last verse. Wherefore, strengthen thyself now in these commands, that thou mayest live unto God. And whosoever shall observe these commandments shall live unto God. Remember, we it, making it through the tribulation is a promise, guys. It's almost like it has a guarantee on it, that if we keep these commands, if we keep the, co the covenant given over there in Exodus chapter 20 through 24, verse 7. Write that down. Tw chapter 20. Through 24 verse 7 is called the book of the covenant and we are promised by our father that's the promises of the bible is that we keep that com that covenant keep the and and these commands over here it says we will be saved and and i ain't talking about you know going off into the spirit world being saved you know i'm talking about being saved alive after the tribulation living through the tribulation you know when the grass start growing again you know and you know you know every everything and re return back to peace on this planet some of us will be alive and happy during a time it will be the people who actually embrace these rules that are in the scripture you know this is a promise guys this is a guarantee here and that's why you know we teach you guys this because you know we we want some of you guys to be around with us you know i want to be here on this planet you know alone you know this is a mighty big planet you know somebody needs to survive this thing so let's take heed to these commandments um, I thought I was going to get on into the other uh, chapters, but, you know, I'm going to go ahead and just end it here. This is so important, you know, and, you know, I don't want to make this video way too long that, you know, people won't click on it or whatever. Um, so I'm going to short, I'm going to um, cut it off here and then we'll pick up the next chapters and the, ne the next part. In the meantime and in between time, go back and check out the other uh, three classes that we've done on this subject uh, leading up to this point. Um, check out our other classes, um, that we do again, our channel is about surviving the tribulation. You know, we're, we're expecting a rapture over here too, a coach at coaching the fight, but you know, our rapture is going to be a spiritual event where, you know, our spirits is going to be enlightened to, you know, uh, um, 
um, a knowledge of divine things. While those guys, those other guys leave the planet and go somewhere else, they thrust off into the spirit world, you know, up there, you know, meeting their judgment up there. We want to be down here on the planet, you know, meeting our judgment down here, surviving this tribulation so that we can inherit the earth. They'll be back, you know. I, I, I've been talking to a few of them, trying to get them to, you know, think about, you know, where these incorruptible bodies supposed to come from and all of that. They'll be back, you know, they'll be back as our children. Reincarnation is real, guys. Reincarnation is real. When they come back, they're going to come back as our chaps, you know, and then they're going to learn to obey the commandments. Then they're going to learn the rules. Then we're going to put hermits in their face and they ain't going to have no choice but to obey it then. Anyway. Hope you got something out of this video. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, go ahead and hit the dislike button, but leave us a comment either way. And shalom.